The White House has established a commission to study the Supreme Court. The 36-member commission won't make any final recommendations for reform, but rather analyze arguments for and against Supreme Court reform, examining matters like term limits for justices, changing the size of the court, and changing case selection rules and practices. The commission is expected to begin holding public hearings in the upcoming weeks and report back to the president in about six months. So joining us now to talk more about this commission and the possible changes they're going to be looking at is KUSI legal analyst Dan Eaton. Dan, how are you? Good to see you. I hope we have your microphone. Um, no. First off, what do you think? I think so. We'll, we'll, we'll go for it. Uh, what do you think about the possible, for or what do you think about the formation, rather, and what do you think about the rules governing the Supreme Court that they're talking about changing? Well, I mean, the president did uh, promise that he was going to create this commission, and uh, it's going to be a, a really a commission heavily populated by a bunch of academics who are going to come to some conclusions, uh, no recommendations, but they're going to talk about uh, the background, the way Supreme Court justices are appointed and confirmed by the Senate, some historical background about where there's been controversy about the role of the Supreme Court, and then finally an appraisal of the pros and cons of certain structural uh, reforms to the Supreme Court, including those you mentioned, Logan. I read a little bit about who's on the commission. It didn't sound very bipartisan to me. What are your thoughts on just who's on the commission? Well, <laughs> President Biden is a Democrat. It's not surprising that it tilts, uh, as they say, progressive. It, it is, uh, it is a, a liberal trending uh, group. Here's the interesting thing, though, from a local perspective. My good friend Mike Ramsey, who is a tenured professor at uh, USD's Distinguished School of Law and a former Scalia uh, clerk, uh, he also clerked for Judge Wallace here in San Diego with the Ninth Circuit, is on this commission. So we have local representation. He's a conservative. So there is going to be some balance, and you can expect that the conservatives are not going to be shy about saying, uh, let's not go uh, too far. But it's not just conservatives. Just two days ago, Justice Stephen Breyer gave a speech at Harvard Law School, uh, remotely, of course, uh, a, the Scalia lecture of all things, in which he said that structural alteration of the courts could undermine this idea of public trust in the court uh, because it would suggest that the court was influenced by political considerations rather than considerations of the rule of law. So it's not just uh, it's not just conservatives that are concerned about efforts to expand or in any way change the shape of the court in response to unhappiness uh, by the liberals uh, with the conservative uh, majority uh, that currently sits on the court. Well, yeah, that's what a lot of people look at this and they say, wait a minute, this is just one party. They don't like the way the court is made up right now, even though all the rules were followed. So they're just going to change the rules so they can get what they want. But the interesting thing a lot is that this kind of ebbs and flows because, of course, the court packing plan by FDR came about as a result of unhappiness with uh, four very conservative members of the Supreme Court who started striking down parts of the New Deal. And then, of course, there was broad unhappiness with the Earl Warren uh, activist liberal majority that held sway in the middle of the last century. Now here we are with uh, what is generally perceived to be a six to three conservative majority. And now you have the, the uh, liberals uh, very upset, political liberals, it's important to understand. Uh, so uh, you can expect there is going to be a lot of vigorous debate within this commission. And you can expect to see the report, which again, won't make any recommendation, sometime around the first Monday in October, when the Supreme Court begins its new term. So could legally things like term limits of justices be changed? And could the size of the court also be changed? And if so, what would have to happen? Well, it could, but it's all legislative. Understand that the size of the court is not in the Constitution. The fact of the court is, but uh, th that is to say that the Constitution mentions that there will be a Supreme Court. It doesn't say how many. And in fact, in the 19th century, Congress fluctuated it several times, but it hasn't been changed since the Civil War. One of the things that they are going to dis uh, discuss this commission are the merits and the legality of a changing uh, of some of these structural changes you just mentioned. But yes, Congress has broad authority, probably, we'll see what the commission says, to make these kind of changes. Is that going to happen, Logan? No, 
It's not. There isn't the political will to do it, and there isn't the political capacity to do it. So this is going to be very interesting, and it's going to engage the public in a fascinating discussion about the role of the Supreme Court. But I do not expect there to be any, any, any legislative changes as a practical matter that come out of what should be a fascinating discussion over the next six months with a lot of uh, public uh, input. Well, it certainly will be interesting. KUSI legal analyst Dan Eaton. Dan, thanks so much. Good to be with you, Logan. You too. So the, the United Kingdom is in.